Oh, hello. <laughs> Wasn't expecting you this early. I guess you're wondering how I've been getting on with the Nest Hub second gen. All right, well, uh, give me a minute and I'll be right with you. Go on, shoo. <sighs> right, sorry about that. Now, as you've probably guessed, I've been trying out Nest Hub second gen's new sleep sensing feature. And it turns out I'm one of the many people who don't get enough sleep. In fact, a massive two thirds of UK adults suffer from disrupted sleep and nearly a quarter get no more than five hours a night. So sleep sensing might come in handy for a lot of people. Once Nest Hub second gen has been unboxed, sleep sensing is pretty simple to set up and there's a few things to keep in mind to make it even easier. First, you'll need to teach your display where you sleep. So place your Nest Hub in a spot that's level with the mattress near the head of your bed. And make sure you place the device on your side of the bed, about 0.3 to 0.6 meters from your mattress, about one to two feet. Then you need to angle the display towards your head to midsection area and make sure nothing is blocking that view. And then comes my favorite bit. Lay on top of the covers where you usually sleep and when you're ready, tap start on the screen and follow the voice instructions. And that's it, you're ready to get started. Oh, and it's really easy to check out your sleep data too. Hey Google, how's my sleep? It looks like you slept a good amount and it was restful. You woke up a little early, but slept for six hours and eight minutes. And this is the first thing we see, uh, a sleep summary from the night before. And this is broken down into three parts. We've got our schedule, our duration, and our quality. And to get more information on all of these things, all we do is we tap on your sleep. And three things to note here, and they are these three colors. So first we have the white part, and this is our time in bed. So this could be us watching a movie before we sleep, or maybe trying to wake up after our morning alarm has gone off. Then we've got our dark purple color, and this represents our sleep. This is when we were fully asleep. And our light purple here is actually to do with our schedule, which is on the next section. Now, finally, we come to our third section, and this is all about the quality of our sleep. You can then look at different aspects of your sleep in more detail. Apparently, I snored a bit last night. It was a bit hot in the room though, so actually 18 degrees is the recommended temperature to sleep in the UK. Now you can also ask Google for specifics on your sleep, which is especially helpful if you're monitoring a certain aspect of your sleep. And if you do forget to check your stats in the morning, it doesn't matter. You can just take a look straight from the Google Fit app on your phone. And this data is great, but what makes it even better are the tips you get to help you improve your sleep. You can opt into them from the Google Fit app and they give you suggestions based on your sleep sensing results after about a week or so of use. Apparently I should be getting to bed earlier. Makes sense. While I've been using sleep sensing, I've discovered a few little gems I want to share with you. First is pausing and resuming sleep sensing when you're away, for example, and you can do this via the Nest Hub second gen or via the Google Home app. And this is a great alternative to actually deactivating sleep sense, which can also be done via the Home app, but which also removes all of that calibration data as well. Two is setting up a bedtime schedule correctly, which can be done in the device's settings, again, in the home app. If you get into bed at nine, but watch two hours of TV, your bedtime's 11, not nine. Three is using the Nest Hub second gen to play relaxing sounds, like rain sounds, to help me fall asleep. It won't count as a noise, and it actually really does help me fall asleep. Oh, and if you want to switch the side of the bed you're sleeping on, or you feel like you want to recalibrate the data to make it more accurate, you can do this again via the sleep sensing setup in the Google Home app. I've also been using Nest Hub second gen in the living room. And as you know, it's had a few upgrades from the first gen and you can definitely tell the difference. First off, it's got quick gestures, so you can pause and play media, silence timers, and snooze those alarms. And that's all powered by the Soli radar chip, just like sleep sensing. Second, the audio drive is bigger, 43.5 millimeters, which gives Nest Hub second gen 50% more bass than before, and you can definitely hear it. And third, it's got an extra mic, 
So now it's got three of them and it can pick up my voice when I'm in another room. And I've even noticed a quicker Google Assistant response too. And just like Nest Hub first gen, the second gen plays videos and movies from your subscription services. So you can find something to watch no matter what you're in the mood for. Hey Google, play YouTube videos. The night is young, the day is old. Brisk walks with the dog coming in from the cold. And you can control your smart home too. Hey Google, lights off. So that's Nest Hub second gen. It has some great new features. Why not give them a try for yourself? If you want to know more, just head over to GRT using the link in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.